this issue here, Jesus, the suffering servant. This is, is very, very critical for our understanding here. And this doctrine is the one of the major Christian doctrines that would guide our Christian lives. Because of uh, the lack of understanding of this doctrine, today and in the past, the Christian theology had been changed and altered. Altered. Altered means it changed. Or decolored. Colored. Decolored. It's a... You know coloring? Decolored. And that means... Decolored means what? Changing colors. Yeah. Changing colors. Yeah. Decolors. Okay? Or fading. Fading colors. It's a black here, but fading, color fading, it becomes a gray. Like this. Okay? So theology changes colors. When, when we do not understand the servant, you know, suffering servant of Jesus. So this much, the suffering servant of Jesus doctrine is so crucial for us to understand. I will spend at least one hour or if the Holy Spirit allows me to teach you more in detail, then it will be two hours. It depends. Now, you know, in Genesis 3.15, we all know that this is the grand plan of salvation. You write it down. You write down everything that I'm saying. Genesis 3.15 is the grand plan of salvation. This means the Son God, Son God will incarnate to this world and he will crucify on the cross which gave us implication prediction that God, Jesus, who is the equal as Father God, will be the suffering servant, will be the suffering servant. He will not come to this world as as glorious, glorious servant. So his first coming is not glorious. Rather, his first coming is kind of is a suffering And despised, despised, you know meaning despised? Yes. Yeah. Despised or despise the servant. In other words, despise means people, everybody, people hate him. Okay? Okay. People who not who will not respect him. is a despised servant. Hated servant. Or isolated. Isolated servant. Or stumbling block. Servant. Stumbling block. Stumbling block is this. It is... As you walk 
is one stone, okay, rock in front of you. You got chip. You got, you know. You got what? What? what tell me. Slip. Eh? Slipped or you got blocked by the st stone and you fall down. Okay. So that kind of stone called stumbling block. You write that down in your language too. Okay. Stumbling block. Because many people and even Jewish people believed the Messiah, Messiah, Messiah will come as will come to this world as a triumphant, triumphant or victorious, glorious king of kings. Glorious, okay, king of kings. But, but Jesus came to this world as a despised and suffering, unrespected, isolated, lonely, stumbling block servant. So they could not accept Jesus as Messiah. So Jesus became, Jesus became their stumbling block. Jesus became their stumbling block. Because of the suffering Jesus cannot be accepted by their, their notion, their mentality, their understanding. Why such a, you know, glorious Savior came to this world as such a, you know, such a low class, low class person. So it was not for them to accept. They could not. They could not even accept this. Because of the, the, the suffering servant, Jesus, many, many people could not accept Christianity. Now, change the paragraph. In the Bible, especially the Old Testament, especially the Old Testament, there are many many writings many writings on the so called the first coming of Jesus as a messiah <coughs> we have studied that before for instance For instance, for example, <clears throat> for example, if you don't understand, ask me, okay? Uh, for example, that's why I speak slowly. Because we all, see, we teach in English, which is not our mother tongue. Yeah. So the way I teach you is different from, uh, you know, from teaching Americans or English speaking people. That's why I speak very slowly and try to use simple language as, as much as possible. That's why I'm standing and say, try to find out simple language. Hmm. I cannot use a high language. Then you will be in trouble. You have to follow, follow 
your teaching method just like I have taught you. I've been teaching you. Okay? Why? Because that's the spirit of incarnation. Spirit of incarnation. You gotta be, you gotta be low, you gotta lower your, 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 your level to the listeners. That's the one of the one of the one of the signs of good teachers. You have to read audience first. You have to understand audience first. Then you you decide how to teach and what to teach. Then what language and what style you will take. Decide it. So reading audience is very important. So you gotta be, you you know, ready ready for changing your your teaching style as you look at the audience. Okay. Now here again. For example, okay. For example, you know, the the book of Psalm. How many, how many chapters? 150. Eh? 150, okay. Psalm has 150 chapters. Out of this, 74 chapters was written by King David. Some would say, what, 150 chapters all were written by King David? No, it's not. Okay, some written by Moses from Iran. <laughs> now here, don't forget, 70, only 70, about half, half of the psalm written by, were written by who? King David. King David. Okay? But out of this 74 King David Psalm, 16 was on the Messianic, they call Messianic chapter. 16 of them consist of messianic the messianic chapters okay i'm sorry it's it, messianic messianic chapter the messianic chapters messianic chapters means the chapter story and the content are about about the coming Messiah, Messiah. In other words, the Lord Jesus will come to this world as a Messiah. So we call these 16 chapters the prophetic chapters on Messiah. Prophetic chapters on Messiah. Interestingly, interestingly, all these 16 messianic chapters dealing with the coming Jesus, coming Messiah, are portrayed. Portrayed means pictured. Portrayed means, you know meaning portrayed? You know, drawing pictures or expressed 
okay, expressed in, expressed as a, the suffering servant. In other words, Messiah will come to this world as a suffering servant, not as a glorious servant. Nor, nor means nor, nor as the king of kings. Now, among these 16 chapters, among these 16 chapters, the most famous, the most famous, famous means well-known or prominent, prominent. You know what I mean? Prominent? In other words, most, you know, prominent. Hmm? Most distinguished or most uh, well-known and distinguished and famous. Eh? Most significant, all these, you put down all these expressions, okay? We are studying English at the same time here. Most famous, distinctive, distinctive, and, and well-known, okay? Chapter is Psalm 22. So we as a Christian need to remember and, and keep in your mind that Psalm 22 is the typical, most famous, the Messianic chapter written by King David. This chapter contains the suffering servant of Jesus Christ in whole chapter. Suffering servant of Jesus Christ. Okay? So let us just take a look at briefly <clears throat> Psalm chapter 22. It's a very long chapter. Verses 1 through 31. So from now This chapter 22 is all about Jesus Christ. All about Jesus Christ. And this chapter uh, contents have been quoted by many Bible writers in the New Testament. Okay? So this chapter this chapter contents inside the stories okay, had been quoted by, recited by many New Testament writers. That much this chapter is so important. You know, it said, you can see in chapter 22 verse 1 said this my God my God why have you forsaken me you know here now here see now it's talking about who wrote this King David but King David it was not King David who now expressing expressing all these you know stories inside actually King David, he, he saw in his vision Jesus who, who will be crucified on the cross. 
How many years in advance? 1,000 years in advance. So Jesus showed King David what he will do. Okay? And also what kind of even remark he will express. And what shape Jesus will be on the cross or before the cross. What kind of expressions, what kind of his bodily shape, in, in what way he will be crucified, and what, was, what will be his feeling, and he even showed, you know, the Roman soldiers, and he even showed the Jewish high priest and what they are going to say. And he will see Roman soldiers will cast their lot and dividing the cloth of Jesus Christ. Everything that will happen 1,000 years later already were shown to King David. So, Jesus was, it's proved that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He set the plan, what he is going to do, well in advance, and have controlled, managed. Then, he showed him what it will be later to King David. Let's look at Psalm 22, then you will see. You will see. And, and verse 2. Instead of verse 2, verse 6. But, now, it's, it's a very uh, unusual, okay? If you don't have this spiritual understanding that you, you will not, you will interpret differently against the truth taught in the Bible here. In verse 6 is, But I am a worm, and not a man. Reproach of man, despised by people. Would you highlight that? See now, Jesus on the cross, Okay, he will say this. And verse 7 says, All you see me, sneer at me. And separate with the lip, they wag the head, saying, Commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. Because he delights in him. You know, remember this? Huh? The high priest and onlookers already how many years ago already 1000 years ago already already show to whom king david and these old stories goes already foretold prophesied therefore jesus knew Okay, when he carried the cross and and he got hung on the cross, he expected this kind of things will happen because he told he showed King David, and they say to fulfill what. The Lord said to King David, This should be done. 
like that in the New Testament. Look at verse 16 and 17. For dogs have surrounded me. Highlight the dogs. Dogs means what? In the Bible said dogs symbolizes Gentiles. Then over here, dogs symbolizes Gentiles from Jewish perspective. So who are the dogs then? Roman soldiers. Roman soldiers. And the band of evildoers have encompassed me. All those Roman soldiers, they pierced my hands and my feet. I can count and my... Now, would you highlight the pierced my hands and my feet? That, that you know that, okay? It's been already prophesied. And verse 17 is interesting expression here. I can count all my bones. Highlight that part. This theologians, even many cannot even interpret this. Say, I can count on my what? On my, I can count all my bones. This means this. Look at me. This alone shows this. See, Jesus was on the cross like this, and he, he dripped his head down to like this. So, King David saw his eyes on the reef here. Reef of, you know, reefs here of Jesus? So it's like this. So Jesus could count his, his bones. Yeah. Would you write that down? So he was powerless and now no, no, no last minute energy so he was about to collapse so he dropped his neck his head down to down to here rip so he saw that Jesus so you can see pictures the crucifixion pictures see you know he dropped his neck down like that and also verse 18 they divide my garment among them and for my clothing they cast lot now that was fulfilled right in Matthew 27 35 Matthew 27, 35. Let's look at Matthew 27, 35. When they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots. You see, who are they? Roman soldiers. They are Dogs, dog, okay, animal dogs, Gentiles did it, not Jewish people, okay, they divided. So, let me tell you, how many, how many uh, chapters in Psalms? 150 and 74 out of 150 were written by King David. But among 74, 16 are Messianic chapters. Good. But out of 16 Messianic chapters, 
chapter 22 is the most most important most descriptive most well known messianic chapter among this for okay good for most important so psalm when i say psalm 22 then you say oh that's a, that's a, the messianic chapter Now, next, change the paragraph. Okay. What are other, other messianic chapters? Others in chapter 16, chapter 103, 110, there are many. But they are not a whole chapter. Only some part of the chapters has that. But chapter 16, uh, dealing with his resurrection. Resurrection. So I don't have time. So my emphasis goes relate to the suffering, suffering servant. If I expand it too much, then we will, you will lose, you, you will be lost. Now change the paragraph. Another prominent messianic chapter in the Old Testament is the Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Okay? So now do not forget Psalm 22 and Isaiah chapter 53. We will, we will look at Isaiah 53 later. Now, these two chapters are all described the suffering servant of Jesus Christ. Especially the descriptive comments on the scene of the crucifixion. The crucifixion sins. So Jesus prophesied at least two major Old Testament leaders about his the suffering servantship. One King David and the other Isaiah. Okay. So, Isaiah 53 is the messianic chapter. But, actually, the messianic chapter start from Isaiah 52 Verses 13 to 13 through 15, which is the, this is the end of the, only 52 has a chapter 15. So about three verses and begin with Isaiah 53, starting verse 1 through verse 12, which is the whole chapter. Now, shall we open Isaiah 53? Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arms of the Lord been revealed? Because he grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of parched ground, he has no stately form or majesty. Would you highlight that? Because he is, he is not like a king looking. That he should, but see, would you highlight this? He was a tender shoot. Okay? So it's a, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It means weak, weak, weak. His weakness. He's a feeble, feeble nature. And like a root out of parched ground, you see, root out of the parched ground. And he has no stately form or majesty. See, all these what? Suffering servant. Nor appearance that he should be attracted to him. He's put down appearance. So he doesn't look king, king appearance. And he was despised. See, highlight all this. And forsaken of men, the men of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, he did not esteem him, and surely your grief he himself bore, and our sorrow he carried, and we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, all this. And he was pierced through for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being. He will fell upon him. And by his scourging we were healed. All of us like a ship have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall upon him. See how we fall upon him. The so Jesus got all our sins upon him. What kind of goat? Scapegoat. Okay, good. Scapegoat. And verse 7, he was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Did he open his mouth? No, no he did not. Okay. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before his shields, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for and as for his generation who considered that he was cut up out of the land of the living for the transgression of our people to whom the stroke was due, he grave, his grave was assigned with the wicked man, yet he was with the rich man in his death. Remember that? What is it? What is the man who provided Joseph? Are Mate. Okay? And but, verse 10, but the Lord was pleased to crush him, the putting him to grip, if he would render himself as a guilt offering. He was a guilt offering, he was a see his offspring, he is a, a prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in, in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, you see, highlight the righteous one is a capital letter. In your Bible too? NIV, no? NIV is not, it's a righteous in my Bible, in original manuscript, it's a, all is capital letter, one is all is capital letter. And my servant will justify the many, therefore I will not, you know, I will allot him a portion with the great, and so on. In verse 12 at the end, Yet he himself bore the sin of many, and intercede for the transgressions. You highlight, yet he himself bore the sin of many. That's the salvation part here. Okay, now you change your paragraph. Today, Jewish, Jewish people, reads, 
they read, okay, they read uh, Isaiah, book of Isaiah, uh, for their ritual, their worship, their worship service. Book of Isaiah is one of the well-respected prophetic book, prophetic books for Jewish people today. So on their regular service, the rabbi, rabbi means Jewish priest, rabbi, okay, all a v i, rabbi. You know, rabbinic, you know, rab, anyway, rabbi means it's R A V I Rabbi, Jewish Rabbi means it's a, it's a, it's a, you know Christian, Christian pastor pastors it's the same, okay. It's a leader, high priest. Today called Rabbi, they call Rabbi today. Jewish Rabbi used to, the they they supposed to read. Uh, chapters in in the Messiah in no in the Isaiah, but it is very interesting to see the fact that Rabbi. In the Isaiah reading, skipped Isaiah 53. They do not read Isaiah 53. They read Isaiah 52 and they skip to Isaiah 54. It is because they could, they cannot accept the servant despised despised Messiah described in Isaiah 53. They are still waiting for, they are still waiting for their Messiah as the King of Kings. As a result, Isaiah 53 cannot be accepted by their expectation on Messiah. Change the paragraph. Today, there are hundred thousand, hundred thousand Jewish Christians. Today, there are hundred thousand Jewish Christians in the world. In the world today, hundred thousand. We call them the Messianic Jews. Messianic Jews. We call them the Messianic Jews. Meaning, they are Christian Jews. They believe the Old Testament Jehovah God is Jesus. Old 
Also, they believe Jesus came to this world as the suffering servant. Also, they believe Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 are the messianic chapters. Describing and prophesizing Jesus Christ who was the suffering servant. Then they also believe Jesus will appear again very soon as the triumphant, victorious king. So first coming was a suffering servant. The second coming will be the victorious king of kings. There is there is a one uh, article. There is a one article written by a Messianic Jew, American Messianic Jew. Write down everything what I'm saying. There is a one article written by it went in written by a uh, American Messianic Jews. who used to be one of the key members of Jewish synagogue, Jewish synagogue, Jewish church. Who later he converted to Christianity. He became a Christian. In the article, he said, he sent a letter to his former top rabbi. It was a head rabbi in Chicago in Chicago, Illinois, America, Chicago, asking his rabbi this question. Rabbi, why do you skip Isaiah Chapter 53, in our regular reading, regular scripture reading time, he said, I was your assistant. I still wondering why you you did not read chapter 53 and the letter continues rabbi would you give me your clear explanations why you did not read
And the rabbi replied back to him, telling him, it's been our tradition. That's why we do not read. And this man, this man, the Messianic Jew, then replied back to the rabbi. Rabbi, Isaiah 53 is about the Messiah Jesus. The rabbi answered back to him, No, this is not the truth. How can the Messiah described as a despised man? That's impossible. Do not believe this. You are being taught by wrong teachings. By the Christian groups. So you better be back to us. And this man replied back to him. Dear my honorable rabbi, you are wrong. Isaiah chapter 53 is about the suffering servant of God who is Jesus, our Savior. That's why I changed my religion. This story was written, this story is written in a small booklet, it's in a very small booklet that, that is for Jewish evangelism, the booklet which has, booklet which is the, you know, small booklet that is for Jewish evangelism. You know, you have, we have a full gospel, you know, for, uh, for spiritual law, is a little booklet for our evangelism, it's the same. So, there are, there are just so many different small booklets for Jewish evangelism alone. One of the Jewish evangelism, evangelism, evangelism purpose booklet has this story. This story. Okay? Hoping that Jews can come back to our, our Lord Jesus. Jews who knows, you know, what's inside of Isaiah 53, you know, hoping that they can rethink. Oh, they know, they know Isaiah 53, that's about suffering, you know, stories here, despised men, all this, you know, then, oh, that may be Jesus, like that. Hmm. So I'm telling you, Isaiah 53 is the messianic chapter. But that describes the suffering servant. Suffering servant. Got it? Yeah. Now, this will be suffering servant number one.